Hey friends, so th this is the short recap for week 31 of my kernel hacking streams. I'm gonna go through the, the stream and go through all the main highlights and key moments. Um, so for the first 14 minutes or so, I'm just kind of um, reviewing um, what happened last time, which is kind of getting into multi-core stuff. Around the 14 minute mark, I start going through some of these exercises and questions. And in particular, I start answering these questions about um, the difference or the differences between um, the, the bootloader code run on the application processors versus the bootstrap processor because I'm trying to bring up a multi-core system. So I kind of go pretty deep into that and explain that for a while. There's a lot of, there's some unique details about linking um, which require a specific macro to be used in the early boot code um, for the application processors because the that boot code is linked into the kernel, which is linked with um, high memory uh, addresses. So we need to have this macro that kind of does um, like a like a translation from um, the kernel virtual addresses back to physical memory because that code runs in real mode. Um, then. At around the 34 minute mark, I actually start programming and I'm working on the next um, lab in, in lab four, which is to map memory for all of the per CPU stacks. So up until this point, we've been running on a single core system with a single kernel stack. And now we're kind of moving to multi-core. And so we need to have a different kernel stack for every CPU because the kernel, um, because each CPU can handle interrupts um, independently of the others. And so they need to each have their own stack to prevent them from clobbering each other if they both handle interrupts at the same time. Um, and so what we need to do is map um, we have, we have these regions of the virtual memory address space that are reserved for um, kernel stacks. And we need to map those to the corresponding uh, physical memory um, which is now allocated as part of the kernel binary. Um, around the one hour mark, um, I transition into the second exercise, which is the per CPU initialization of the trap and interrupt related um, registers and data structures. And so in particular, there is the TSS, which is used for um, which is used as part of interrupt handling. Um, the TSS is used to uh, swap stacks onto the kernel's uh, stack in case an interrupt comes from, from user mode and needs to be handled by the kernel. Um, but as a consequence of us now having separate stacks for all the CPUs, we need, actually, we need to actually have separate TSSs, which each point to these different stacks. And so that's what I was doing from there, setting up the, the per uh, CPU TSSs. Um, and as a small detail, we need to also load um, the... So each TSS has a GDT entry, and we need to make sure the correct GDT entry is loaded um, into the task register for every CPU. Um, just kind of looking up the manual for some stuff. Around the one hour and 40 minute mark, I kind of finished that and I'm ready to actually test this, but I was actually having some trouble getting Kimu to actually produce um, multiple CPU cores. Um, something changed about Kimu since this class material was released and it seems to be no longer sufficient to just pass a simple um, number to the SMP argument. So I went on a bit of a side quest to try to figure out what was going on here. Um, ultimately, I do figure it out around the one hour 40 minute mark and you can see yeah uh, four cpus found cpu one and two starting but then i realized i actually had a bug because it, it kept rebooting and so i debugged my triple fault or whatever for, for a little bit and i realized i was um i had a bug where i wasn't computing the um 
Oh, let's see if we can see it. I wasn't computing the uh, I wasn't computing the GDT entry correctly to load into the task register. I was using a multiplication instead of an addition. Um, so and that was that was like loading a invalid GDT entry into the task register, which caused triple faults, I think. Um, so after I fixed that bug, I think I just do it. Yeah, I changed it to a plus. After I fixed that bug, everything started to work and it didn't crash anymore. It said um, four CPUs found starting one, two, three, all one after the other. Um, and then the last thing I did was moving on to the last exercise or the last exercise that I did in the stream. Now we're getting into uh, scheduling and locking. And so we want to make our way towards having a multi-core system where tasks are scheduled and run on different CPUs. But a big problem before that point is currently the kernel isn't really um, thread safe in that the kernel um, uses a, a lot of global data. And we're just starting off with this very simple solution of using a big kernel lock. Anytime user space transitions into the kernel, we just we just apply a lock. And so I was just I was just going through um, this basic spin lock implementation that is included with um, the OS. And I just added a few specific locks and unlocks to different parts of the kernel. And that's what we will pick up with uh, next time. So um, I'll be away for a few weeks. So I have some videos queued up for the next three weeks, but if you're following along, the next video that will follow up from this will actually be week 35. Um, weeks 32, 33, and 34 were recorded like a few, like yesterday, and um, they cover some different topics, but continuing from this will be week 35. Um, all right, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.